Cardinals entering the Sistine Chapel to elect a new pope do so as the Catholic Church finds itself in stormy seas. The church's credibility has been battered by the accusations of the widespread sex abuse of children, fatty leaks, as well as the financial scandals at the Vatican Bank. The church is still reeling from Benedict's whispered resignation in Latin. Plena libertate di claro. With full freedom, I declare that I renounce the ministry of Bishop of Rome, successor of St. Peter, entrusted to me by the Cardinals on the 19th of April 2005, in such a way that as from the 28th of February 2013, at 20 hundred hours Central European time, a day before the conclave convened in the Sistine Chapel, division was clear. Not everyone who wanted to speak got the opportunity, suggesting a fissure between the reformers and traditionalists. We implore the Lord that through the pastoral solicitude of the Cardinal Fathers, he may soon grant another good shepherd to his holy church. No favourite exists, no clear leader has emerged, perhaps again reflecting the total shock of Ratzinger's resignation. But there are some candidates. Angelo Scola is an Italian and well-liked, but he's not from the Curia, the powerful Vatican bureaucracy, and will be backed by the reformers. <coughs> Odilio Scherra, the Brazilian, carries with him the hopes of Latin America and the Curia. He's well versed in the activities of the Vatican Bank and the complex bureaucracy within Vatican walls. Two Americans have emerged, Timothy Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, who gives himself no chance, and Boston Archbishop, the bearded Sean O'Malley. Then there's the Canadian Mark Ouellette. He's well respected and well known in the Vatican. He's the man who vets the bishops. 